we have a problem. Well, not all of us at least. Uh, those of you in the western and southwestern U.S. kind of have a problem though. Welcome back to the podcast once again everybody. If anybody new as always this is uh, generally a podcast. So screen's not going to change all too often, but it does have relevant stuff on it. Only if you can safely do so. Uh, PayPal and Patreon links are both uh, down there below for anybody who wants to support me. Now, the issue we are presently facing, at least uh, the western portion of the U.S. is uh, presently facing, along with uh, eventually some uh, northern bit of Mexico as well. Fresh water supply. There's a number of big reservoirs that are primarily uh, supplied by water flow from two large rivers, the Colorado River and the Rio Grande River, along with a few smaller rivers uh, in some side locations. But regardless of the particular source uh, feeding the reservoirs, they are in some trouble. So starting, as always, with every water episode we do, uh, looking at the big mega reservoir, Lake Mead, enormous artificial lake nearby to Las Vegas. Needless to say, the water supply source for Las Vegas and its roughly 3 million uh, people. And also, not entirely secretly, the water source uh, supply for uh, Southern California, including the Los Angeles area and its 18 million residents. As a huge portion of uh, Southern California and Los Angeles's water supply are pumped uh, several hundred miles to there via pipelines from the Colorado River at the lower end of one of a pair of reservoirs on the California border, which are both uh, downstream from Lake Mead, fed by the Colorado River. So Lake Mead is constantly releasing extra amounts of water all the time to flow downriver to make sure that uh, those reservoirs that those uh, Colorado River aqueduct pipelines are drawing from for Southern California, Lake Mead, is constantly having to release water, uh, extra water from itself downstream to make sure that those two reservoirs stay uh, basically full or close to it so that there's no endangerment of California's water supply. Meanwhile, in doing so, endangering Arizona and uh, Nevada's water supply which is inevitably going to start causing um, some strife and some issues as uh, given the state of Lake Mead at the moment it is dropping and it is dropping really fast. Now it does have a, a yearly cycle, uh, different, uh, different patterns throughout the different seasons of the year where it loses more water and then regains some water. However for the last two and a half decades or so it's uh, basically it's it's lost more than it regained almost every single time and can't even really be held up uh, even by the Lake Powell Reservoir which is some ways uh, farther up the river and farther out to the east which uh, releases extra water from itself also to uh, try to keep Lake Mead from dropping too quickly who then is constantly releasing its water downstream to those uh, California feeding reservoirs to not allow them to drop at all. So you can see there's there's an interesting like self-doomed situation set up here. And the US uh, lakes and reservoirs system is uh, measured by elevation feet. So the number isn't the depth of the lake, it's how high the surface of the lake is above sea level. And if it were full, Lake Mead, uh, back when it was full, was at about 1200 and 25, I believe, feet above sea level for the surface of its water. But uh, that was a long time ago. This is now. And uh, Lake Mead, over the last two and a half decades, has lost well over 100 permanent feet of water level and uh, went down through the 1100s in elevation feet down below them. And uh, prior to last year, it had recovered the year before during its, uh, its refill season up to about 1098. It dropped during last year down to about 1,083 or so and did not regain uh, all that amount that it lost. It only regained about five feet of it uh, during the refill season that ended several months ago. It regained up to about 1,088, since which it has fallen really fast and over just the last couple months has already lost another 10 feet of water level. 
that quickly and is down to under 1,078 feet of elevation water level. And for reference, uh, if it were to empty out, the bottom of the lake is at about 915 elevation feet. However, however, also keep in mind, it's not like uh, some perfectly straight up and down walled uh, swimming pool. It's basically a flooded canyon, so it gets narrower and narrower the deeper down you go. So each uh, foot of water level has volumetrically has volumetrically less water than the foot of water level above it that are just lost. So basically as things keep going down, uh, the further down they go, the faster they will also then continue to go further down. And as I said, upriver from Lake Mead is uh, Lake Powell over on the Utah border, which releases water from itself to uh, try to keep Lake Mead from dropping too fast so that Lake Mead can in turn keep releasing its own water uh, down to supply California through the aqueduct system. And Lake Powell has uh, been on a perpetual loss uh, over the last two and a half decades or so as well. And uh, during each of its uh, refill seasons on average, each year it tends to regain about 10 feet of water level. Uh, however, again, like Lake Mead, it keeps, uh, for the most part each year, losing a decent bit more than it uh, replenishes. And this past refill season, yes, it did replenish uh, by another 10 feet. However, uh, since then, it has already lost another 20 feet of water level in just a few months. It can keep lowering itself. It has a couple hundred more feet of depth. However, again, the same issue as with Lake Mead and many of the other river reservoirs applies. It's a flooded canyon. So it gets narrower and narrower the further down you go. So that's one angle of the issue as it uh, stacks up really fast. And uh, some of Southern California and Los Angeles's water supply also comes from a smaller river system, uh, the Owens River. However, it uh, does not provide anywhere near the sheer amount that uh, the Colorado River does. And the Owens River is in really, really bad shape at this particular moment. The U.S. Uh, river system uh, measures rivers via their, their current flow rate, how much water is actually in the river and moving, and uh, that's measured in cubic feet per second. And the uh, Owens River is only currently at about 40 feet per second, and uh, that's compared to normally it should be around 200. So uh, it's down by, you know, 80%. Now up in uh, Northern California, the San Francisco area, is supplied by the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, which is not connected to uh, either of those two rivers. It's uh, it's an independent thing in and of itself, and it isn't doing as bad, uh, but it it's not good after the whole uh, super fire season that happened last year. That kind of put a, a big hit on it. As normally, uh, when it's full, Hetch Hetchy is at about 3,806 elevation feet of water level. If it were empty, it would be at about 3,500. And normally each year the cycle goes, it uh, will drop down to around three, to around 3,750, 3,740, and will actually usually refill each refill season completely. However, uh, because of, again, the super firestorm season last year, it uh, was drawn all the way down to only about 3,700. And since then, since it turned around and started recovering, heading towards 3,750, but uh, we'll have to actually see now over and out of California and apart from the Colorado River, the majority of Utah's population up in Salt Lake City and the surrounding area, uh, they get their water uh, from the Great Salt Lake. It's treated, obviously, before they drink it, but their water is entrapped from the Great Salt Lake, and uh, that's been having its own depletion issues as well, as uh, you should be able to see all uh, flip back and forth really quickly here uh, for once between the two different images of the Great Salt Lake several decades ago versus the Great Salt Lake today where a, a decent chunk of it is missing as you can see in the satellite image. And the Great Salt Lake is one of the few weird ones where they decided to uh, uh, measure by percentage full and it does fluctuate up and down and it does fluctuate up and down. And last year, the Great Salt Lake uh, had actually gotten down to only 62% full. And uh, over this, and over this recharge season, it uh, went back up to 66%. However, that's now passed, and it's uh, losing water level again, 
Granted, over the last couple of months, it's only lost 1% down to 65. Now down in Arizona, apart from the uh, Colorado River or the Rio Grande, uh, we'll get over to the Rio in a second, but for Arizona, uh, the Phoenix area, something like five or six million people literally just living in the middle of a desert. Phoenix gets its uh, water from a number of surrounding reservoirs, and they measure them uh, by collective percentage full uh, all of them averaged together, and for the last year or so, it's been in the 70s mostly, and it was recovering uh, during their refill season for that region. However, then it kind of stopped, and uh, instead of regaining about 14% uh, or so, like it probably should have, it only regained a couple of percent, went up to uh, 76, and since then has uh, actually resumed dropping again, and is uh, back down to 74% full collectively. And the Rio Grande River uh, providing most of the water supply for the state of New Mexico, uh, some of southern Colorado, a portion of Texas, and a decent portion of northern Mexico. The Rio Grande River uh, has not been doing all that great. Uh, last summer it was pretty bad, and up until literally just very recently, it was still doing not too good. Normally, at least at the uh, the flow rate station that they measure it at uh, on the U.S. side in New Mexico, its flow rate normally should be at this time of year around 2,000 cubic feet per second. And uh, up until just recently, it was uh, still way down and was under 1,000, only at about 900. However, uh, starting snowmelt uh, from the extra precipitation that was received up in the mountains during the winter in the, uh, the Rockies and the last few rain and storm systems that uh, have kind of swept through that particular region, those have uh, kind of recovered it by a decent bit for the moment at least and uh, bumped it back up to 1,700 cubic feet. However, we'll have to see how that holds up. And just a bit to the east, Austin supplied by the reservoir Lake Travis, is uh, going to be getting into some trouble as time goes on, as Lake Travis has been consistently losing about 10 feet of permanent water level each year. Granted, they have uh, been spared a few times, like uh, they regained 20 feet or so a few years back uh, when that hurricane plowed through into Texas heading west. That dumped so much rain that uh, it replenished Lake Travis by about 20 feet or so. And all of the uh, storms and fronts that have come through recently in the uh, past few weeks and couple months have also helped Lake Travis as it was starting its uh, yearly downward slope and had declined from about 660 down to 657 elevation feet of water level. However, the uh, recent storms and everything that have come through have actually replenished it by about three feet back up to 660. And the more recent ones have been a bit lighter on it, uh, so they've only been giving it enough rain to kind of hold it steady at 660. So we'll see where it goes from there. But anyway, that's where it stands as of the moment. And uh, that's where we're going to end it for this one. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. You can support me if you want through PayPal, Patreon, only if you actually can. If you're in the southwestern U.S., uh, get out. And no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect you all, and I will see you all around next time.